Bungalow Bill here. I have survived Christmas with my family with only my eight-year-old gaming laptop to keep me company. Which, because I could not load the ship that I was working on, I instead decided to work further on cram cannons. If you've seen my last cram cannon video about how to build them quickly, this is an example of the turret that you generate doing that, which has the normal 2D diamond tetris as borderwise would refer to it. Four barrels, and I included, in addition to the deck armor, as well as some heavy armor on top, but not the actual turret cap itself as decoration on that heavy armor. We're going to be building a turret using 3D Tetris that would fit the same box and have the same number of barrels. So let's go over how 3D Tetris is built and various ways of building it. Now we're going to start in a very similar way to the Diamond Tetris, except our basic building block is going to be Our basic building block is going to be a bit. Our basic building block is going to be a bit thicker. It's going to be three levels or two levels, really, depending on how you look at it. But the start is going to be very similar. Now, I did do a lot of experimentation on my own without looking at what other people have done for 3D Tetris. And ultimately, I only found one viable basic form of Tetris. And it's sort of the same as what everyone else has found out. So you build a normal 2D slice. And then, okay, these need to be positioned in such a way that when they connect to the next level, because I'm going to put another 2D slice above this, they need to connect in the same way to that level. That's that's one of the gotchas, but then I put another layer on top of it, which is additional payload packers, uh, which obviously need to connect to the pellets and not, not the payload packers. I have a little bit of trouble identifying sometimes when they're red. So something like this, which we're going to copy to the other side. However, there are a, there are a few things you can do to optimize it slightly such as aiming things like this to give you areas that have that have more focus as to where these payload packers point. And something you can do is to put an additional unit of explosive pellets there, which this only gets three connections, so it's not even as efficient as normal planar Tetris. But it does provide a little bit more density efficiency and I am going to be having one unit of that as well as some units of payload compactors which I'm going to put in later. So something that you also notice is that some of these payload packers are not connected to anything. I've only put in one additional cram connector for them. This is intentional. I'm going to build out the first layer and then I'm going to put these in. The reason for that is because I'm aiming this to be multi-barrel Tetris. If you want to do single barrel Tetris, you can just go and connect all of these now. Copy this all over, connect them all at the top, and you're good to go. That's all that you have to do. But multi-barrel is more complicated. And it's more complicated because we have several constraints on it. One is that when this thing actually gets placed down, these do not necessarily all belong to the same barrel, these cram connector stacks. So I cannot have two six-way connectors coming from two different stacks adjacent to the same payload packer. So I can't put a six-way connector like this. And if I was just copying this out in straight lines without rotating it, I would be able to build a single block that I could just copy all over and would connect properly meeting those criteria. But I'm going to be building this turret with 90 degree rotational symmetry to support four barrels. So I'm going to be adding these connectors in later. That's, that's sort of one of the gotchas. And I'm going to have to be checking my work a lot because it's not complicated, but it's really easy to make a small mistake that makes the turret asymmetric. 
Another thing to look at before I begin work on the actual turret is that normally when you place your cram connector Tetris or your cram Tetris for a four barrel turret, there are two things that you can't do. One is have a payload packer directly in the middle and the other is have a cramp connector directly in the middle. Really all that you can have are pellets or payload compactors or nothing in the middle. Now, no matter how you look at this, it doesn't meet that criteria. There is no section of this that you can put in the middle. So what we're going to do to resolve that is we're just not going to put any of these in the middle. We're going to build a special, a special Tetris for the center. It's going to be three by three. A result of that is that this Tetris is basically exclusively for large turrets. I believe 13 by 13 is sort of the minimum efficient turret that you can do it on. This is a 17 by 17, which isn't, which isn't perfect. I think you want to go in increments of eight, so 13 and then 21, but it still works pretty well. Now, I am going to, like my last tutorial video, I'm going to be occupying this bottom letter, this bottom level with cram components. However, I'm going to build my first layer here, and then I'm going to move it down so that when I do the copies, I won't have a hole in it. So let's pull out the prefab. And now I'm going to copy it in a few places. There is already an issue that I'm seeing that I forgot to do in the prefab because I need 90 degree rotational symmetry and we're going to fix that. So where do we not have 90 degree rotational symmetry? Well, it's, it's in these that are shared between, between these. So what we're going to do to address that is just paste or it's replace these and to make sure that when we're back to the same one, make sure that there's a 90 degree rotation between each one. Now that that's satisfied, I'm going to take the prefab tool. It doesn't really matter this orientation, but I'm going to take this and move it 90 degrees like that. So what I'm going to do now is take sort of this first little piece that I've built stick a firing piece on it so that I can see the connections and I'm going to fill in the missing connections these are fine to do however I want to because they're sort of interior to the turret but I at least want to be I want to be efficient so if possible, I don't want to put these cram connectors where these payload packers could use. So spaces like this and spaces like this are absolutely fine because none of them point there. And I want to use this space instead of this space because otherwise I'd have to use both spaces. So we'll do that. And now it looks like I have successfully connected all of these bits except for this guy. And this guy could be connected here or here. Connecting it here will give me more freedom for when I build the central unit. And I don't think either has any... No, this, this one here has one payload currently attached to it. So I'm actually going to put a compactor there. And now before I go too far, I'm going to look to see places where my payload packers are productively doing something. Sort of on this level. And in those spots, I'm going to put payload compactors. In the other spots, I'm going to put gauge increasers.
Of course, I'm trying to do this pretty quickly for a tutorial, so I might make some number of mistakes, but you know, do as I say, not as I do. So the next step, take the prefab tool, and I'm going to use it to copy, copy everything. Let's get all this height in as well. Boink, boink, boink. So now pretty much everything is connected except for this area. That um, was non-functional, and the reason that was non-functional was because what I actually need to do is this. Let's move on to the next step. And the next step is building a central stack. The main thing is that the center stack has to be all pellets or all compactors. In this case, we're gonna go with all pellets. And then right, I put these on backwards. I tend to do that a lot. If you're very efficient about this, I think you can you can do quite a lot here. But I am not not necessarily going to be very efficient. Make sure that I don't forget anything. That would be tragic. I find that this section really doesn't affect my stats that much as long as I'm not horribly inefficient with it. The main thing is that it has to be rotationally symmetric so that I don't, don't set my stats out of whack. I think depending on exactly how you build the Tetris around it, you can get slightly more efficient than what I did. Okay, these are all the same. Now we are going to build this out all the way to the edge. We're going to move it down to the lower level. We're going to copy it all the way up and we're going to build the last level. Okay, so I can just copy this and sort of use it on the outsides in a similar manner of what I did before. But I also have, I also have the issue that That, that wouldn't be terribly efficient. I only have a very, very small space here. I believe these two sides are symmetric, so there's no reason I couldn't have just copied this across both sides. Except I had nothing to connect to, so it didn't actually copy it. Um, no, things are not quite symmetric. So actually, this gives me a decent, a decent opportunity to pack in just a little bit more firepower here. I don't think I'm going to bother to fill some of these holes just because I already have so many gauge increasers. My diameter is already 1700 millimeters. It's not bad to have a few extra so that if you take a shell through the cram cannon, you keep your 2000 gauge, but there's, there's a limit to how many I actually need. And I'll probably put some fuses and stuff in some of the other places. You could also put material storage in the turret if you really want to save space elsewhere in your ship, because one of the things that makes these turrets a bit on the pricey, or 
can potentially make these turrets a poorer choice can be space inefficiency because the more expensive or the larger your ship is the bigger a cost you're going to pay for it so even if something provides more efficient firepower it's not necessarily the right choice something went a little bit wrong there we're gonna have to redo this i think yeah Oh. All right. I think that went down correctly that time. Yep. So now I'm going to translate this one level down, build up all the other levels, clean up the bottom, and then do the top. Uh, let's make this actually 17 by 17. We will save this for later. That disconnects all of these, that's fine. Save these all. Bang. And now, because the bottom and top levels of these are the same, we're just doing this. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I need one more middle level, I believe. The, the turret that I'm copying over there has nine levels of cram, including the top level of this sort of stuff. Let's see if I made a mistake yet. 59.44. All the way around. Reload time is looking pretty solid. It's a hair over the other turret, which is 16.7, and I'm trying to match them exactly. Okay, is there anything that I'm losing here? Yes. So we're gonna lose a gauge increaser because I lost some of the connectivity at the center. This is currently not leaving space for AI components, unlike the other, the other turret. Oh, I can put, I can put them in here. That should be, yeah, that's connecting to the base. There's really a limit to how many you need, but I like my 90 degree rotational symmetry. I usually just put in one redundant one or so, but... Ah, oh, well. Now, something about this sort of Tetris is that we have no gauge increasers on this last level. So we can pack additional firepower in here. Okay, if I'm looking at these right, no, these pellets are on the these pellets are on the ninety degree angle, which means that these pellets are kind of halfway between these two turrets. That means that I have to be really careful. Okay. 
Well, we'll copy this setup first. This is another place where payload compactors or nothing may be more efficient to put here. I'm putting high explosive pellets. Part of the reason for doing that is so that when I When I go and compare this to the other turret, they'll have pretty similar reload times, which you kind of have to do if you want to be able to compare apples to apples with your cram cannons. All right, my reload time's a little bit high, but other than that, we're looking good so far. So, I really don't want to push my reload time even higher, so I'm not going to put in I'm not going to put in another set of payload compactors anywhere. So let me check the stats all the way around. So we have 2,000 millimeters, 2,000 millimeters, 2,000 millimeters. Now. I think it's not efficient, but I'm going to replace these payload compactors with high, with high explosive pellets. Oh wait, these, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to replace them with high explosive pellets. And the reason I'm doing this is to push the reload time down so that I can compare the two turrets more more directly. Now we have almost exactly exactly the same reload speed as the other turret. Actually, let me let me redo that slightly. I'm going to do this stack instead, it's slightly more efficient. Okay, we're back to this one. These are all the same, all the way around. The last thing that I need to do is to actually copy the top of the next turret on here. I, I do have a slight issue in that department. It doesn't actually match up with the top of this one. But oh, I didn't actually save it as a prefab. We're we're just gonna make it fit and sort of the exact ways that this lines up is something that can be tweaked later. But I'm just getting it on for the cost comparison. Yeah, so this is going to break the turret neck slightly. I might re Tetris it a little bit in the future to change this. But 
Here we go, two mostly identical turrets from the outside. If I go into sub-objects mode, make myself a folder for both of them. I'll name it demo. Save the first one. Save the second one. So you can see the results here is that per barrel, the firepower is now 64.13 compared to the previous 71. That's effectively about a 10% decrease in firepower, but they cost substantially less. They're about 30,000 30, less in cost than they were before. And you can do subtle, that didn't, that didn't stick. I am not on the base level. You can do very subtle tweaks, sort of using, using the same overall strategy, because this is also a 3D Tetris, but I was a little bit more aggressive about packing in additional pellets. So we have 486 per barrel. instead of 453. So there are definitely, definitely a few pellets in this that could very well not be in here like this one with only two connected packers. And this has that sort of thing, this sort of thing in multiple places. And, you know, this sort of thing, like this should probably be, probably be switched with a pellet, that sort of thing. It's not, it's not incredibly efficient in that manner, but If I go to the demo folder to save these all, to compare it, you can see I've only brought the price up by about another 4,000 over the slightly more efficient one that I showed. But our firepower is now 68 instead of 64. And this still has a little bit more tweaking to go because, you know, of those issues that I just noticed. but. If you really play with it, you can get remarkably similar numbers because I'm only losing three firepower per barrel, but I'm still saving. Now it's not 30,000 more, now it's more like 25,000. To me, that's, that's reasonable value for the battleship that this will go on, which after I make those tweaks, I plan on, plan on putting it on. That'll get me about three more SeaWiz guns or just shave a fair bit of price off of it, and maybe a little bit of weight as well. Anyway, that's all for this episode. I hope you enjoyed watching, and I hope to see you in the future.